So I am recording this lecture and I post them to Blackboard for your use to go back and reference and for the online class. The online class is going to follow our exact schedule, so they too are starting today. Um, the phone number listed here is the phone number in my office, um, and I have an answering service, message service on there. I'm not in my office a whole lot, to be honest. I'm usually in here teaching, or I do some prep work in here too, but you can leave a message there. The fastest way to reach me and get an answer to anything is email. So the student, or my school email, friend.loom. So all of your instructors are going to be first name dot last name at go to LTC. Um, you all have student email accounts. You need to access that, know it exists, and check it daily. <laughs> because that's where we tell you stuff like, I changed my mind, don't read chapters 5 through 300. And if you don't see that email, you just read chapters 5 through 300. Okay, so check your email. Don't, I've had people, honestly, in November when I say, I send everybody an email. Oh, I never checked that. <laughs> you have to check your email. Okay, this is your job now. You're a student here. This is your job. You have to check your job email. Um, if you have another, like, <laughs> Gmail or something, maybe you want to find a way to have it query it and dump it all into one so you always see it without going in and out. Whatever works for you, just make sure you check that. All right. 15-week class, we start now, and we go the next 15 Mondays, um, and that's a literal statement. The week of fall break, fall break starts on Tuesday. We do come to this Monday class to get caught up. The week of Thanksgiving, we still have class Monday and Tuesday, okay? So every Monday from now until um, Christmas break, we're going to be hanging out right here. So this is Adobe Photoshop, and the book that you need for this class is also the Classroom in a Book series, this one. This is the current one. And I'm also going to be supplementing it with um, tips and tricks from the book that I've used the previous eight years, um, which I really, really like, and I hope I don't regret switching books. But the good news is is that I know what I've taught out of that book that's unique and good and works, and I'm going to supplement it in if I feel that this book is dropping the ball. There are a few chapters in here we skip because um, we cover them in digital photography. So, um, editing video we may or may not cover. If you're a program, if you're getting a degree here, we do a whole other class on video editing using Adobe Premiere and After Effects, which is the standard, not Photoshop. Photoshop is not meant for video production. But you can do short videos in here. Um, working with Camera Raw, um, I'm also skipping because we cover that in the photography class that you guys will have next semester. All right. um, you have to have your own subscription to Adobe Creative Cloud, specifically to Photoshop for this course. So I'll talk to you and the two of you to get that figured out. And once you have cloud, um, the Adobe Creative Cloud, it comes with its own cloud storage. How many of you have had Computer Platform Essentials with Kelly already? And you've already had two of them, right? Okay. The rest of you have it today, correct? So Kelly's going to really help you with getting into the cloud, understanding the cloud storage, navigating stuff here at school. Um, ideally, that class starts on the first day of school for everybody, but because it's a Monday class, you guys are all two weeks deep into school and now getting it. So, um, <coughs> but she'll help you with the Adobe Creative Cloud um, cloud storage. All right, competencies are listed. What we're going to learn our grading scale, <clears throat> just like um, I mentioned in illustration. I, I can make that a little bit bigger, but I guess not. Um, is a little bit more rigorous than high school, perhaps. 93% uh, is an A, 86 is a B, and an 80 is a C. And you need a C or higher to pass the course to stay um, on track. And Photoshop and or Design Fundamentals tend to be prerequisites for your next classes. So you need to pass these classes to keep moving forward. Uh, late assignments, same policy as my other class. Um, if I give you a due date, that is when things are due. If it's late, 
If it's due at the start of class or the end of class and I don't have it, it's considered late at that minute. And if it's late in those first three days, it's worth 90% minus whatever's wrong. The rest of that week, if it comes in, so say on day five or six, you turn it in, it's now down to 80% minus anything that's not right. And then if it's in that second week of being late, it's only worth half points. After that, it's nothing. Um, the reason is, is that everything builds. And if you're not doing lessons one, two, and three, there's no way you can expect to jump into lesson four and have a clue what you're doing if you don't know the basic tools and how to use them. So it's cumulative, you have to stay current, and the deadlines are real. And the other reason is, in the real world, how many of you have jobs? Even if it's part-time, how many of you have jobs? If they give you a deadline, do you have to honor it? Do you have to meet it? Or are there consequences, right? So we're practicing. <laughs> attendance, um, I do take attendance, and because this is an in-person class with an online class, and this one is full, I have a wait list, people that want to be here, so attendance is important. If you don't want to be here, think you're not going to be here, you might want to move to the online section right away rather than not show up and get failed. Because if you have two unexcused absences, you earn an F in the class. So if you're sick, car doesn't start, the roads are pure ice, email me, tell me about it, I understand stuff like that. If your car doesn't start, 13 weeks in a row, um, I'm not going to buy it. <laughs> um, if your grandmother passes away four times in the semester, I might not buy that either. So, and if you have four grandmothers and you lost all four in the first week of school, I'm very sorry. But um, just common sense. Be respectful. Come to class. Like I said, if you're, if you're going to be a habitual no-show, you're taking a seat away from somebody who's in an online class that maybe doesn't want to be, but that was their only option to take the class. Okay. Um, all right. In case of an absence, it is your responsibility to make up any work missed. Your late assignments are still going to apply unless it's something like, I've been in the hospital for a week, or I've been sick as a dog for three weeks. I, you know, obviously I don't expect you to keep up with work if it's something like that. Um, how do you think, if you miss class, how are you going to find out what I did? On Blackboard. Blackboard. <laughs> yeah. Look on Blackboard. Everything is going to be there. Everything we did, current, in case I didn't get to what I thought I was, is going to be on there. Videos will be on there. Due dates will be on there. Drop boxes will be on there. Um, look there first. If you have a question and you have a friend in here, ask them what's going on. Or if you have a specific question, by all means, ask me. Um, one of our favorite questions though is, yeah, I, I was gone last week. Did I miss anything? Yeah, I would love to answer that honestly, but I don't. <laughs> so yeah, we move ahead. It's a four hour class. We meet 15 times. If somebody's not here that week, I don't pause and say, we'll wait for Johnny to show up next week. So we're not going to do anything. Yeah, I know. We can't let Johnny miss anything. So everybody else, you know, you guys get punished. So yes, check Blackboard. It's all there. Um, College-wide policies, again, hyperlinked going to the actual information. Student handbook, all of your rights and responsibilities are listed in the student handbook, so make sure you check that out. Um, ADA statement, if you have a documented um, disability that um, you need accommodations to help you um, learn better, then by all means, Patrick Neunfeldt can work with you and set up an accommodation plan. So if that applies to you, please, please, please talk to Patrick early in the semester and get that accommodation plan in place. <clears throat> um, code of conduct is listed as well. Plagiarism, um, we talked about in graphic design, it's very, very easy on the internet, especially to right click and save a file or steal a file. That's plagiarism, that's cheating. Don't do that, make your own work. Um, if you turn in something that is super beyond what we've learned so far and I know when you've told me that you've never had Photoshop before and it's kind of sketchy what you're doing, you know, you might have to show me how did you do this? How did you know about blah, blah, blah? Show me how you did this and if, you know, your eyes get really big because all you did was right click and steal, that's a problem. Did you get logged in or is it not working? Really? Okay, we'll call them again at the next break. <laughs> um, 
discrimination and sexual mis misconduct not tolerated at all on campus. So there's resources and policies right here on the link. Um, concealed weapons are not allowed on campus, whether you have a permit or not. And lots of campus resources here, um, counseling, tutoring, um, Phi Theta Kappa is the honor society. If any of you have even an inkling of going on for a four year degree um, after you do this two year, we have a deal with um, Lakeland College and there, you can transfer anywhere, don't get me wrong, but the, the crossover that we have with Lakeland College, they take all of your credits in the graphic and web program and apply them to their new graphic design program. They're not used as electives or nonsense. They actually go hand in hand. And college-wide, there's a deal with Lakeland that if you are a Phi Theta Kappa member, which means you're an honor society, so I think it's a 3-5 and higher here. So if you can get that grade in all your classes here and be a member of that, you qualify for a twelve or fourteen thousand dollars scholarship at Lakeland right off the bat, like it's yours because you were Phi Theta Kappa and you transfer there. So, if you have the grades and you're invited to join that, I would highly recommend you do for a variety of reasons. That's just a small one. Okay. Um, our career placement center—they were super helpful, super exciting, and pumped up about everything. They'll help with. Resumes, cover letters, job search, interview skills. They know who's hiring. Um, they're an amazing resource on campus. And then financial aid office um, down towards the student center down there um, can help you. And I know financial aid is like this big, horrible thing. I have kids in college and I hate filling out that FAFSA and I hate dealing with it and knowing what's what and when it kicks in and when it doesn't. We're lucky here in that there are human beings right down the hall that will talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, go, if you have any questions, go talk to them. All right, stopping attendance in class does not constitute withdrawing from it. Withdrawing. So just because you choose not to come, you can't later say, well, I dropped that class. Well, no, you didn't. You just stopped coming. If you're going to actually drop a class, you need to formally do that and just know that there might be financial aid implications meaning you don't have enough credits to still qualify, things like that. All right. Um, tutoring, we are working on setting up um, open lab tutoring in this room Monday over the noon hour, so right after this class, and hopefully Tuesday in the noon hour after illustration. And what that will be is a second year student who will just hang out in here and be able to answer and help tutor you if anything, Photoshop, Illustrator, Design Fundamentals, whatever you're in right now. And that's free to you. So once we get that up and rolling, I'll let you know. Um, a link to the library's resources is right here. And instructor email response. Um, I check it on all of my devices a lot, but what I don't do is check it after uh, probably after nine o'clock I try not to look at it for sure and in the morning I tend to be very busy until I get here so if you send me something in the morning I may or may not see it till I get to school but I will get back to you as quickly as possible um, I don't think I've ever been beyond a day unless it's a weekend weather related school closures hopefully this won't be an issue this term unless we get socked in December with some nonsense but um, the school will email you, call your cell, call your landline if you have one, text you, um, send out carrier pigeons to your house, whatever it takes. <laughs> they get the message to you a variety of ways. Um, when the phone first rings, you can kind of laugh because all of your devices are going to start buzzing and dinging. It's like, hey, hey no school. <laughs> or we're late at least, something good. It's crazy. As a teacher, I still love that too. A snow day is still awesome no matter what. <laughs> Except it puts us back four hours, which can be really hard. Um, help desk. If you're on campus, there is a um, four-digit number that we plug in. If you're off campus, when you're on your first login screen on Blackboard, it gives you an 800 number that you can call. So if you're at home having login problems or Blackboard problems, um, call the help desk. And then your student email. I've already told you that's pretty important. 
So that is the syllabus. Do you have any questions or concerns? Question about the policies? Anything? Speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> All good? All right. All right, our schedule. I'm trying to think if I have this anywhere. Next thing I want you to do is I want you all to get into Blackboard. So I'm going to have to pause here. All right, the first thing I want everybody to do, because we might need to do some updating, is to log into your own Adobe account. So that icon at the top right of the screen that, um, I don't know, kind of looks like a sideways infinity, that's the Adobe icon. Um, when you're in this screen, go to the apps. And <clears throat> if your Photoshop CC says update, I want you to click on it so that you get the latest version of Photoshop. If it says open, then you're current and you don't need to do anything else. So log in, go to apps, and then make sure that Photoshop is completely up to date. In Blackboard, I'd like you to go to the learning plans for this class. And um, the first thing at the top is the lesson files for this book. Go ahead and download that. All you have to do is click on the link here that says Photoshop Lessons Zip. And you'll see at the bottom left of your screen, it's going to start downloading a zip file. And then once that gets downloading, I'd like you to also click on Learning Plan 1. And you should see an item that says Picks for Bridge. Click on that. And that should also start downloading to the lower left corner of your screen. Once they're both downloaded, we'll um, extract, I'll show you what we're going to do with them next. So get those two items, the book files and a folder that I made called Pictures for Bridge. Get those two downloading. <laughs> Okay, so this file down here at the lower left that says Picks for Bridge, click on it, and it's going to automatically unzip it for you and put that folder in your Downloads folder. So if you click on it down here in the lower left, this is the screen that you should have next, you should see a folder that's called Picks for Bridge. You can leave it in your Downloads folder if you'd like, or you can drag it onto your desktop if that's easier access for you. Um, I'm going to do that myself. So the easiest way to do that is just to make sure that you can see a piece of your desktop behind all of these windows. So right now, back here, my, well, I guess I have Illustrator running for no good reason, so I'm going to shut that. Um, and then these other windows that I have are just a little bit big, so I'm going to minimize those just by dragging a little here. And if you lost that pop-up screen like it appears that I did, all that is is your finder. That's equivalent to my computer and a Windows environment where you can go and look in the folders. So the lower left corner of your taskbar has this blue and white face, and that's your finder. If you click on that, that brings back wherever we last were. We're in the downloads folder right now. I'm just going to take this folder, pictures for bridge, and I'm going to drag it onto my desktop. If you don't want to do that, just remember that it's in your download folder instead. So I'm going to take it over here, drag it, and let go. My book files are now done. So I can see at the bottom of my floating window, I have that download is done. So I can click on that zip file. And it also is going to unzip all of the book lesson files, put them in the download folder. If you had me for Illustrator and you were sitting at the same desk, that folder is also called Lessons, right? So let's rename this one. So with this file highlighted, right click on it and choose Rename. And instead of this also being called Lessons, let's call this Photoshop Book Files. Otherwise, it's the exact same name as your Illustrator book files. And then I'm also going to drag this onto my desktop just out of convenience. 
Um, it's warning me that I've already done this because I did this earlier and it says, do I want to replace it? I'll just say, sure. You're not going to get that because I don't think you had it existing before. So if you always sit at this computer, once you log in with your identity, those folders are going to be on your desktop for you. If you end up at another computer, they will not be there for you. If you go home, they're not going to be there for you. So also saving them either on a jump drive or to your cloud account where you can access them from anywhere is really smart. And those of you that have had Kelly already, did you do that? Did she show you how to use the cloud storage? Who's had computer platform essentials with Kelly already? Did she show you that or not no, yet? Not yet. Okay. All right. She will. <laughs> So just know, if you're at this computer, they're going to be here. But if you're anywhere else, they're not. So you might want to put it on a jump drive. You might want to put those on um, OneDrive in your Microsoft account. Or if you have a Google account personally and you have a Google Drive, you might want to throw them in there so you can get to them. So did everybody successfully download those two files and get them saved either in the Downloads folder or dragged down to your desktop? Okay, good, 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 good. All right, we will then be ready to move ahead.